one of the sad aspects of your uh, incredible success in so many domains of science, like serious adult stuff, yeah. that you might not have time to really create a game. You might end up creating the tooling that others will create the game. And you have to watch <laughs> yeah, exactly. other, others create the thing you've always dreamed of. Do you think it's possible you can somehow in your extremely busy schedule actually find time to create something like black and white, some some an actual video game where like you could make the childhood dream yeah. <laughs> become, become well, reality. Well, you know, oh, there's two things ways to think about that is maybe that with vibe coding as it gets better, and there's a possibility <laughs> yes. that I could, you know, sure. one could do that actually in the, in your spare time. So I'm quite excited about that as a, as that would be my project if, <laughs> if I got the time to do some vibe coding. Um, I'm actually itching to do that. And then the other thing is, you know, maybe it's a sabbatical after AGI has been safely stewarded into the world and delivered into the world, you know, that and then working on my physics theory as we talked about at the beginning those would be the two my my two post agi projects let's call it that way <laughs> I, I would love to see which the ultimate post game a, post agi which you choose solving uh the the problem that some of the smartest people in human history contended with so p equals mp <laughs> or creating a cool video yeah well I, they, but they might but in my world they'd be related because it would sure. be an open world simulated game uh as realistic as possible so you know what what is what is the universe? That's 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 speaking to the same question, right? MP equals MP. I think all these things are related, at least in my mind. I mean, in a really serious way, it's like video games sometimes are looked down upon as just this fun side activity. But especially as uh, AI does more and more of uh, the difficult, uh, boring tasks, something we in, in modern world call work. You know, video games is the thing in which we may find meaning, in which we may find like what to do with our time. You could create incredibly rich, meaningful experiences. Like that's what human life is. And then in video games, you can create more sophisticated, more diverse ways of living, yep. right? That's I think so. Idea. I mean, those of us who love games, and I still do, is, 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 um, you know, it's almost can let your imagination run wild, right? Like I, I used to love games um, and working on games so much because it's the fusion, especially in the '90s and two, early 2000s, the sort of golden era, maybe the '80s of 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 game of the games industry, and it was all being discovered. New genres were being discovered. We weren't just making games; we felt we were we were creating a new entertainment medium that never existed before, right? especially with these open world games and simulation games where you were co-create, you as the player were co-creating the story. There's no other media. Uh, entertainment media where you do that, where you as the audience actually co-create the the story. And of course, now with multiplayer games as well, it can be a very social activity and can explore all kinds of interesting worlds in that. But on the other hand, you know, it's very important to um, also enjoy and experience uh, the physical world. But the question is then, you know, I think we're going to have to kind of confront the question again of what is the fundamental nat nature of reality? Uh, what is going to be the difference between these increasingly realistic simulations and uh, multiplayer ones and em emergent um, and what we do in the real world? Yeah, there's clearly a huge amount of value to experiencing the real world, nature. There's also a huge amount of value in experiencing other humans directly in person, the way mm -hmm. we're sitting here today. Yes. But we need to really scientifically, rigorously answer the question, why? Yeah, And exactly. which aspect of that can be mapped yep. into the virtual world? Exactly. So and it's not, it's not enough to say, yeah, you should go touch grass and hang out in nature. It's like, why yeah. exactly yeah. is that valuable? Yes, and I guess that's maybe the thing that's been uh, haunting me, obsessing me from the beginning of my career. If you think about all the different things I've done, that's they're all related in that way. The simulation, nature of reality, and what is the bounds of you know what can be modeled.